Right, so I'm gonna have a go at another one, but in oil pastels. So what I've got here, I've got some, this is called sugar paper. This is what they use in schools. And it's um, it's basically got a slight grainy kind of texture to it. Like, I don't know if I hold it up, if you can see a slight texture in the light there, at the edge of the paper. It comes in all different colors and it's cheap and cheerful. And it's brilliant for crayons and oil pastels, which I'm going to use. So I've got oil pastels, which are basically posh crayons. But grab your crayons if you've got them, or grab your oil pastels, whatever you've got, you can use them. So this is I've got super cheap paper, sugar paper. Um, the Americans call it construction paper, and I know um, Costco sell a huge wad of it for not very much money as well. You can obviously buy really posh versions, but it's not worth it, I don't think. Um, especially not if you're doing it with the kids. But you want anything, you don't want anything super smooth. I've tried this before on paper that's too smooth. And the crayons and the oil pastels, they just kind of glide off. They don't stick to the paper. So um, rub your hands over it. Um, <laughs> sounds a bit weird, but if it's um, if you can feel like the a graininess in the paper, that's brilliant. Um, I was going to say like printer paper is too smooth, so that's the difference that you're thinking of. Um, the picture I've got has got like hay in the background, and I'll show you the picture that I'll be working from. Um, so if you want to watch my video and I will print out the picture, that's completely up to you. Or look at the picture and work from that. Um, I've gone for the orange, um, the yellow, because it's got all the straw and the um, autumn leaves down here. Um, so I'm going to ditch the green. You can use any colour. If you haven't got any colour, just go for white. Um, white's really good because you can go at it with loads of colour as well. So I'm going to pick up, again, always, always start with your light colour. So for this, I would use either a light green, sounds crazy, but there's lots of black feathers and in the black feathers, there's hints of green and blue. Um, but just so that you guys can see it, um, actually, I'm gonna grab my brown because you'll be able to see the brown. I was gonna use the black, but if I, it's a bit harder to disguise. So I'm gonna go for the brown this time. I'm gonna go a bit smaller. And um, if I bring this one back, I think there's a lot of detail in this and I'm not sure if I've gone a bit too hard on this. So I'm going to try and keep this the pastel one a little bit simple um, because there's loads of detail in that. But hopefully you can give it a go. So well, I'm going to start exactly the same way. So we've got a triangle. This is where I'm really bad at maths. I don't know what that triangle is called, but it's not. The point isn't in the centre. It's just to the left. triangle there I've got this triangle for the head here and then I've got this head shape here coming through and then I've got his lovely wattle so I've got I've gone for a straight line up and <laughs> a bit of the wiggle coming down right so what I'm gonna do that looks like a kind of robot chicken already, rooster. So I'm going to go for his back, nice curve coming under. If we go round on his head, so this is his beak. And remember the beaks point down, they're short and fat, pointing down. Um, should I grab, yeah, I'm going to grab a red, grab your red crayon. If I go too fast, just pause me as well and catch up with me. So again, funny little hat on the top with lots of spiky bits. Coming over his beak. And funny, <laughs> I love, do you like my technical terms? The funny dangly bit underneath the beak. And I'm sure there's people cringing because they know all the proper terms for these. I don't do. There we go. And that's the red bit. I'll just put a bit of colour on that. Grab my brown crown again. So this is the front. Again, I'm going to 
remember they're really proud of that chest sticking up. No, come down. This is where the shape gets a bit funny. So although I drew a triangle, you've got this chest that sticks out, it comes down quite straight. And then you really want this shape here. This shape is really important in your chickens and roosters. So you've got this bit that sticks out and then it really dives back for this quite chunky foot there. So you want that sharp curve there with that flat bit coming up there. And then curve on the back, almost up to the bum. And then we're going to do some feathers at the back there. We can have fun with them in a minute, I'll show you. So I did some short curves, some zig kind of curved zigzag going up and down randomly, some longer ones there for his um, tail feathers. Do, big, do some big curves coming through. Be really brave and with this. And again, like that one, if you go wrong, don't worry, because we'll be going over them. Just draw until you're happy. And then on his back here, he's got these feathers coming down like that. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to draw this front bit. And he's really started, starting to take shape again. Let's give it, I'm going to swap colours. I'm going to give myself a grey colour. He's got a funny grey foot coming down there. They're really kind of pristine, I can't remember. They really remind me of the dinosaurs feet. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to Got a nubble there, come down straight, nubble, straight on the front there, another little nubble, and a lot again, a lot of this is hidden, so this is where it's really good because you just make up a few random wiggly lines to give an impression of a foot there. Colour it in. This is where we're gonna have a bit of fun. Pick up, so I'm gonna pick up the, my black one um, crown, I'm gonna put it on its side. And just do a light shade over it. Only really lightly. So I've got it coming in. Oh, missed that bit up there. And this is where I'm gonna go over that bit. Again, I've drawn a flat line, but it's good to do a bit of a wiggly line as you go along to make it look like feathers. And what I'm going to do, over that bit that I shaded, I'm going to do some little wiggles. I do this a lot for fur, fur and feathers and hair. I just do these little wiggles here and there to make it look like we've got feathers. And there's a, I want it dark around here. Because again, the light is up here and this is in shadow. Let's make that nice and dark. I thought that was coming down, was that? So, over here. Again, a bit like when I did the pencils, those little short lines. And make them short, not too long, and that gives the impression of this sub there. Um, make those lines a bit lighter, longer rather. And then here, I'm going to bring out some of. So I'm doing a few curves here and there for those feathers, and then this. If you've got an outside of a feather, you can break it up. So instead of, you can either do one straight line or do a few jagged edges on that line. So I'm just going back to my rooster. My niece has called me halfway through that last video. Um, but coming back to it now, so where do we get to? We've got really nice outline. line. I'm gonna try and keep this one easier than the last one, hopefully. Hopefully the last one, if you found that too hard, hopefully this one will be a lot easier. 
Um, so it's got our outline going, got some shading in the black. This is where you can start to have loads of fun. So grab all your crayons that you've got. Um, I'm using the oil pastels. I love the oil pastels just because they're really thick and creamy and you get loads of colour coming off it. So if I just show you some, we had some orange coming down with some feathers. And again, the just like with the colouring pencils, always do it in the direction. So these feathers up here, again, a stripey coming down. Um, these ones coming across the back, they, they've got that curve because they're curving over the back of the rooster and coming down. Add some red bits in there. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, you can, you can, if you want to, put as many colours, keep colouring, keep going as much as you want. You can do, I always say this, you can do as little or as much as you want on this. Um, and then what I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some fun here. So it's all a bit boring at the moment, but I'm gonna grab my a dark green, darkish green. There we go, that one's darker. Um, and a darkish blue, we've got a darkish blue, yeah. And I might even grab a bit of purple. And then again, you wanna just color them in, go to the direction of those feathers. And again, at the side where I did the bits at the side, you can do some little jagged edges at the side. Put some colour in. I want to put some colour in round here, make them lovely and colourful. Let's go back to here. So I've got some blue now, I'm putting in some blue. Wherever you've got a colour, this is, I always do this in my pictures, um, if you're putting it somewhere, just do little bits of it elsewhere. That's what all the proper artists do, it's called colour harmony. So you're just using some of that colour elsewhere. I might even put a little bit of that up here, it's got this dark patch. And the colours all blend together as well some little dark bits on up there. Get some purple and just really have fun with these. So I'm going to put in his eye. Again, leave a little highlight. I need the beak, doesn't he? I'm going to grab my black, he's got really black beak, this rooster. I'm just doing the unders underneath the beak. I'm not going to colour in the top bit to make it look like the light's hitting on it. And I'm just going to do a little bit of um, outlining around that. It's getting lost a little bit. Just so we can see what's going on again. So you can either leave him there, you can keep colouring and adding as much colour as you want. And then round the bottom here, I might pretend that we've got some straw across the farmyard floor here. So I'll grab the beigey colour, beigey brown, and I'm doing these curves in different directions for that straw on the bottom there. And then always, when you're doing it, never stick to one colour. Fuses, so I'm going to grab a slightly darker colour. Let's go across his foot. Mm -hmm. Use whatever colours you've got. This is like an olive colour I've just found. There we go. Oh, do you know what? He's lost his red bit, hasn't he? Let's just bring this red bit back in. Oh, there we go. That's better. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. He's come back again. And so you can just keep colouring. It's addictive once you get started. You just can't stop. But if I leave it there for you to have a go. So hopefully this one is easier than the coloured pencil one. If you've grown up, any mums and dads that want to give it a go, um, you can put as much into it as you want. Um, the coloured pencil one is quite an advanced one, maybe for the older ones. And next I'm going to have a go in watercolour as well, because I know there was lots of people that wanted to give it a go in watercolour. I've just remembered another cool thing you can do with your pictures. Um, so with the crayon, if you've got an area where you've got loads of crayon, um, pick up something sharp. So I've got my set square here. I'm going to pick it up and I'm just, you can scratch out of the crayon. If I show you, I'm going to scratch some lines out. And you can scratch some lines and some feather details as well. adds a bit more detail and a bit more technique so you can do it any little bits if you want to put some like feathered edge soften bits scratch into it and you can do this not just with chickens if you fill a page with crayon as well you can scratch out your own images draw into it good